The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon from TFNN. Welcome to the December 13th, wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader's Zed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And of course, the easiest way to do that, it's to always remember that life happens for us. Not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two-by-four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Today, you and I, we get to go check out the circumstance of these markets. We get to go figure out what the bulls and the bears, what the buyers and the sellers are communicating to you and I just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here, and more importantly, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. Dial on in, 877-927-6648. Of course, if you can't dial in, well, just let your fingers do the walking. Send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. Inside that subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, inside the Tiger's Den, hey, just any ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show right now. The Dow trade up 111 points. 24617 is the print. S and P is up three. Nasdaq 100 up about a quarter percent, or 14 points. Russell is up a half a percent, a little bit more than half percent, eight dollars and eighty cents. Semis are up two bucks. Uh, you've got gold up seven. Hmm, something to think about. Silver's up 17 cents. Lightweight grew back 31 pennies, leading the charge here to the upside. Something unusual. Bitcoin Investment Trust up 28 bucks, trading out at 2305. Mercado Libre up 15 dollars or five percent. Net ease up 14 bucks or four percent. Arista Networks up 650. It's making music. It's making green music out there up 3%. Acuity Brands to the downside off nearly 7% or 11 bucks. Bluebird Bio down about 9. Credit Acceptance Corp down about 7. AutoZone down about 5 bucks, of course. So plenty to look at, but I want to look at what you want to look at. And the first question of the day coming from a viewer, coming from a listener, was is there any edge? Do we have any edge? Can I see any edge? in the markets with regard to which way the market might move after the 2 p.m. Fed announcement. And the question or the answer to that is, well, I don't know. Let's go see if we can find an edge. And the only legitimate way that I can come up with to try to find the edge or try to answer that question is to just simply go ahead and take a look at the, uh, where is it? Uh, go ahead. Oh, man, that's really wild. Uh, my monitor's messed up. Shoot. Let me see if I can figure this out. Oh, my goodness gracious. Um, of course, I, I'll have a backup plan, but give me just a moment here to see. Um, golly. Show on. Okay, well, so it's not that one. Okay. It, uh, you Sonic. Uh, sorry, I had, I had kind of a technical difficulty. Didn't realize. Should have realized that. Um, Let's try this one right here, that it was going to mess up like this So uh, from the uh, current slide. Let's see. Oh, that didn't work. Okay, no problem. Well, I, I've got a, I, I, I just have a, I don't think this is going to work either, but let's see, uh, slideshow. Sorry about this. I'm usually, okay, that didn't work, so I should have it now figured out. It's got to be the one that I didn't. Uh, hey, there we go. Okay. Uh, the the data, I'll show you why it is that I wanted to actually put these slides in a little bit of a uh, slideshow, so to speak. And that is because what I wanted to do specifically was look at the 2 p.m. hour. So I went back and taken a look at the top portion of this chart. And we're going to answer the question really for each of you out there that are wondering, hey, for the S&P 500, so we use that as our general indice out here. And the bottom panel happens to be gold. 
Now, in the case of showing gold, I'm showing the GLD. So that way, we're just looking at uh, market hours out here, East Coast, regular trading hours, I should say. And so the last time we had a Fed rate hike, Fred, Fed rate hike you try saying that just once, um, was on June 14th. And the red arrow on this chart, top portion S&P, bottom portion is gold, is exactly at 2 p.m., as the uh, rate announcement uh, took place. Then you've got a 3.30 uh, type uh, time frame out here where Yellen's going to come out probably like about 3, talk between 3 and 3.30 out here. But you can see that the immediate reaction, again, a 10-minute time frame chart here in the S&P, last time there was a red hike, rate hike, was price went down in both the S&P and in Goldilocks. Now we have just a handful of uh, red four. We only have four rate increases. We're just taking a look at during the last, uh, since the Fed has begun raising rates here. The time before that was March 15, 2017. And what you'll see here inside the S&P 500, you'll see the immediate reaction moved higher up until 3.30 p.m., just slightly higher. So between 2 and 3.30 p.m., we saw the S&P 500 move higher. And then continued moving lower from like about 23.90 down to about 23.20. Um, so that was a pretty decent move, not like in a minute, but over a course of uh, several days out there. In fact, all the way down to the 27th of uh, March out there. A gold on that meeting, gold simply at bottom and continued moving higher. So in the S&P, I'd say we have two in a row here where in essence prices pulled back. And gold were 50-50 with regard to how it should react. If we look at December 14, 2016, that was rate hike number two. Well, you can see right at 2 p.m., uh, the S&P 500 traded down. In essence, traded sideways after that for a period of time. Uh, in fact, in this case here, from about the 14th through the 27th, as far as the market. And then it kind of pushed lower. Gold, the immediate response there was for gold to trade lower as well. So we only have one left. So you've got the S&P so far Three times, three times the charm, where we've seen the S&P 500 go ahead and retrace out there. And why is that important to know? I guess for a couple of reasons. One, can, I, can, can three times guarantee the future results out here? No. But let's go take a look at the first rate hike. Let's go back to December 17, 2015. Right at 2 p.m., that's where the red arrow is. And what we can see here is the S&P 500's immediate move was to move down. And then it eventually came back and it retested its highs and then moved down up until about the 19th or so of the month. This was on December 17th. Uh, so this was, uh, oh, I take that back. That was, uh, yeah, uh, no, that went into a following month out there. But, and if you take a look at gold, uh, the GLT, gold went ahead and moved to the upside out there. So gold is kind of 50-50. The S&P 500 at this stage of the game is anything but 50-50 out here. Does that mean that uh, the uh, S&P should pull back? I don't know. It's done it four times in a row. Is there any reason for it to not do it on the fifth time? So uh, that should answer your question. If you're looking for an edge, I think that is the edge. What has it done? over the uh, past four rate hikes. And each of those were telecast, were broadcast. We all knew what was coming down the pipe. There were no surprises. Today will be no surprise either. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com.
TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Steve, take your phone calls. Now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Traditionally at 727-445-1044. Welcome back, folks. Dow's up 105. Let's go out to Philadelphia and speak with John. John, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you doing today? Hey, Steve. Well, I'm very good. Thanks for taking the call, sir. My pleasure. I, I, uh, I understand Steve, you. I wanted to ask you about tactics on the uh, U.S. stock indices, be it the Dow, the NASDAQ, the S&P, between okay. now going into February 1st. Uh, and just to recap, the um, past couple of days you've done a fine job of uh, documenting uh, where the market stands today in a clearly defined uptrend with good technicals and power with uh, higher projections on MET at this point. And also uh, some seasonal cycle work suggesting a uh, uh, an expectation of a rebuy, or excuse me, another buy opportunity to, that we should uh, be looking for or monitoring the market closely to see if it presents, uh, say, second half of January into February. Yes. Uh, so with all that said and all that you've done, the question I've got for you is. Uh, on long positions here now, right here at mid-month, uh, tactically, do you hold uh, right through uh, the next 60 days? Or alternatively, do you like the idea and want to implement booking gains with, uh, with a plan to rebuy on a dip uh, during the first 30 days of the year? Sure. So, so I, I, so it's a great question, you know, which is asking in the do we, if you're anticipating a dip coming uh, in the market, do you go ahead and take your gains and then basically buy back in? And I've got really a couple different answers for you, but let's go take a look at the uh, charts. And when I say a couple of different answers, one of the things that I do uh, each morning for subscribers is at the very top of my newsletter, uh, and I've blown this up here just so it's easier to read, is I provide information both what I consider long-term. So that's going to be your retirement funds, your 401k funds, and intermediate term, which are really going to be your trading type of funds and vehicles out there. Uh, and so I do that for the S&P, for gold, and for 
for Treasury bonds. That way, we have a nice mix with regard to the market. And this is actually as of this morning. And here, I'm my call is long-term bullish with an anticipated price move in the S&P 500 up to the 2778 area. That doesn't mean that's going to be a top. That's just where I anticipate price is headed to next. Uh, I'm intermediate term bullish, so on both time frames out here, um, with possibility of holding that into the 2017, the end of 2017, or even February and beyond. With regard to gold, long-term bullish there, but intermediate term bearish. And I've got a price projection of 1208 on that. And then I've got the outlook for bonds. And and John, the reason for long term, I'm going to answer it this way. Long term, I'm going. My suggestion is going to be sit on that, hold it. Don't try to trade around long term funds out there. It reminds me one of the. There are many great quotes out of reminiscence of a stock operator, but the one story that I appreciated the most was how hard it was to have bought in at the bottom. Much really like you did with uh, Bitcoin. Wasn't really the bottom bottom, but it certainly was a bottom out there compared to where prices and you know the question is that you've always got to grapple with in your mind is can I ever get that price back but you make your trading decisions based upon your time frame you know if your time frame was this thing's going to a hundred thousand you basically never sell or at least some portion from the long term so with regard to long-term portfolio holders out here, where I'm anticipating, and I'll show you that the market's going to move much higher, I would never have them cash in that position just to try to buy it back. Instead, I would say, hey, additional monies that you're going to put into the 401k or your IRA or whatever it might be, your Roth, to go ahead and do that and prepare to do that at the end of January. Now. If it's okay with you, um, let's you and I go back and take a look at some of the elements that we should be looking at. In this case here, uh, you and I are taking a look at the uh, Dow Jones uh, chart, uh, in fact, the top of the chart in 1929. And uh, what we are looking at here, and you really brought this to my attention years ago, um, and I think at one time we were looking at the uh, Russell 2000, and we were looking at a logarithmic uh, uh, scale. For a chart, And in fact, that's what we have here. This shows at the uh, bottom a logarithmic scale from 1924, uh, and it's got nice bottoms up into the 1929 high. Now, this is a monthly chart that we're looking at. And what's interesting about these trend lines is that when they fail, oftentimes price tries to get back into that trend. And we can see along the way when that failure took place inside of the uh, Dow back then, uh, it was rejected by price at that trend line. And as soon as uh, it, you know, and if it gave it, it gave up the ghost, so to speak, right from there and went down into the lows into 1932. So taking a look at uh, logarithmic uh, trend lines is an important thing to do. If you and I step back even further and we take a look at uh, the uh, the trend line now coming off of the high. In 1929, and we take a look at the high in 1966, you're going to see a nice additional logarithmic trend line. And the interesting thing here is that the uh, is that the crash of '87. That's right where my uh, where my uh, cursor is at. Found support right at that trend line. So just the opposite of what you and I just looked at here in the Dow. Uh, when it made its high in 1929, broke through that trend line, came back up and tested it and rejected it. We have the exact opposite pattern. We take a look at that logarithmic scale trend line here inside of the uh, Dow. And really, there was a, a new, um, a, you know, a new set of highs. That's what the message uh, clearly we can see here, because what you and I can do is go back and take a look at historically. What did that mean? And what we know is that's really an important uh, trend line out there, uh, that the 1987 crash found support basically right at it or very close to it, not exactly to the tick. Now, if we take that exact same trend line, John, uh, and that's at the bottom of my screen, and I just simply, I just copied it for this chart here. I just copied it and moved it up to the 2000 and 2007 top. That's the top line that's up there using the same logarithmic scale out here. And what we've seen take place over the past two months here, really was last month, I'd say after, really over the past four months, is we have seen that new level that should have been resistance. We are seeing a breakout above that level. It's one of the reasons that gives me the conviction at this stage that the uh, Dow is headed much higher, that we've entered a, just like we did in 1987, 1986, 1987, where the Dow went ahead and Dow went ahead and entered a new phase.
phase, it looks like the Dow was doing the same thing. Now, that will be the case as long as price remains above that trend line. So, yes, you're right. I've been providing over the number, really the last number of, of many months out here, but certainly even more conviction with regard to where price is headed to inside of the Dow. And it looks like we have entered a new phase. And, you know, the price levels of 30 and 40 and 50,000, they all match up with this. And that just means that price needs to stay above the top of this uh, log scale. So any questions so far? No, that... Uh, uh that uh, is very helpful. Uh, and actually, I'm going to take that back. I said no. I'm going to say yes. I do have one question. Since you've shown uh, the big picture of how we've gone into blue sky territory, um, shorter term, uh, just looking at the patterns that you might see on the daily charts, that might come into play the next one to four weeks. Okay. Is there so, any trend line yes. support? We're, 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 yeah, we're going, to, we're, going, we're going to a break right now, but stay on the line, and let's come back and figure out how we answer where those next tops are and therefore maybe the next bottoms. Steve Rhodes with TFN, and we'll be back with John in Philly in just a moment. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video tiger tv exclusively at tfnn.com this segment is brought to you by think or swim for more information just click the think or swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com
Welcome back, uh, folks. We're on the line with John in Philly. And uh, uh, John had posed a question yesterday inside the Tiger's Den towards the end of the show, and I, I wanted to get to it. And a lot of these slides I had already prepared and uh, uh, was prepared to review some of this stuff. So it was great that John decided to uh, call in. That way we can, you know, go through these ch uh, charts. I can pr present some information, and John can ask me some questions out here. Now, what we've established, you know, there's from, from in, if we just look at the 1929 move out here, uh, um, really from the lows back in 1926, 27. Uh, and it was a nice big move to the upside. I mean, 350% or so off of uh, off of the lows in 1926, I think, out there. Um, there were retracements along the way. And so John has asked the most uh, important question, which is, hey, how about what do you foresee over the next uh, several months out here? Maybe at least just coming into the end of uh, January. And so I think what we have to do, just like when we just took a look at the S&P 500, how it reacted when the uh, Fed uh, came out with their decision decision the last four times. I don't know if it's going to do it the same the fifth time, but it, it very likely is. Um, but we should anticipate there's going to be retracement. So if we just simply go back during the course of the last year and try to identify the pattern that has been most consistent at these market tops, John, uh, it has been my price relative strength divergent pattern. It's where price moves higher, does with less relative energy, and we wait for some type of bearish reversal candle. And in fact, that's what happened in February of 2016. And then in that case, there, the market went on to make an A to B equals CD to the downside and a seventh wave move. Um, so those are just simply two patterns that you and I follow, we pay attention to out here. And it's important to say, okay, well, this was working. Uh, it formed a bottom. So that could help us and assist us with trying to identify the next bottom out here. If we go beyond that and we go uh, uh, into... Um, uh, we take a look at August of 2016. In August of 2016, we had that same type of pattern. Price in the center of the screen out here. Price moving higher, doing less relative energy. Didn't make an A to B equals CD to the uh, downside specifically. Didn't make that uh, seventh wave move. Um, but what it did do, you and I, or I pay attention to my little red line. I pay attention to that price oscillator. We can see where the uh, Dow broke out was when it got that price oscillator back above zero and we had price close above uh, Stevie's red line, that uh, oscillator unchanged line out there. So it is a tool that you and I pay attention to, or at least I speak about during uh, on every show out here. So there was a pattern that we could take a look at. If we look at the top that formed in March 2017, it did it with a seventh wave move out here and then went ahead to move lower. And we can see that price oscillator got right down to the zero line, as it often does, and as soon as price moves above that red line, that's the signal of another bottom, and that took place. So at the tops, we're going to be watching for just the same things, seventh wave moves, price relative strength divergent patterns out here. And if we take ourselves to where we are at right now, where we are at right this moment, give me a moment here just to switch uh, to a different uh, chart, uh, a different uh, 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 chart here. And we'll pull up the uh, Dow, and even including today's move out here. Here's one thing that we know, if we update it. Price is moving higher. I've got to hit the right button. Price is moving higher, doing it with less relative energy. So we're in wave number five at this stage. Um, if it's going to go to seven, you know, we know that that can't occur until early next week. But price is moving higher, doing it with less relative energy. If price were to close inside the Dow below 24, 423, um, that says the uh, Santa Claus rally is over for a bit. Um, and if we see price move lower and it holds 24, 423, just simply tells me, okay, wait for that next move out there, that next topping pattern, that seventh wave type move out here. So that's how I take a look at the tops that have formed here recently. I don't have any reason to believe that it will be any different uh, this time. And that's what I'm watching for. And then it's going to be a matter of trying to time the bottom. You know, trying to watch one of these three or four different patterns that seem to be um, available to us each time we've seen a, a bottom and it's the next time to move up inside of the markets. How's that you, uh, Yeah, thank you so much for that. Um, um, since uh, we're always thinking the what ifs, yeah. is, there, is there a price level, a trend line support level, something uh, that you've uh, determined in your mind that says this, um, yes, I'm bullish, yes, I expect higher prices, even if there's a, a dip, but uh, we're breaking an important level, get out, get flat, reassess. Is there anything that you've thought and identified uh, here in advance 
just absolutely. for that uh, what if scenario. Yeah, absolutely, because because it's incumbent upon you and I to always look at both sides of the trade out there and where you have that no-go, go, no-go no zone out here. And it really, for me, is as simple as paying attention to that uh, trend line established uh, by the logarithmic scale chart out here, and that's what I will be watching. It all depends upon, uh, you know, which month. Uh, in order to give you a, a price point out that uh, it's going to really depend upon, you know, how prices, if price gets down there. Um, and if I give you a, a price right now, it's probably in the, I thought I had written this out here. It's probably in the 21,000-ish area, 21,500 maybe, some, somewhere in that range. It's going to be, take a look at that logarithmic uh, scale uh, from the uh, 2000 top to the 2007 top. Um, I've even got a secondary one out here, which is just simply going from the 2007 top to uh, where we saw that last significant breakout move. And that last significant breakout move was really in 2000. 2015. And that breakout move occurred when we had an all-time high that formed right about here where my cursor is. It's, I'm not on the live chart uh, just yet. Uh, and then we saw price move down, pulled down into the 15,370 level. And then we had a higher, a lower high that formed, but we also had a, a higher low. Uh, I think that might have been the February 2016 time frame. And as soon as Pike broke through those all-time highs, uh, that's where uh, Marty Armstrong, and, and John has uh, turned each of us on to some of Marty's work. You can go read his work. But that is where the potential of a, another phase transition or vertical market could be taking place. And if that's the case, we won't know that until price gets there, uh, but we do know that price has broken through some significant resistant levels out here, uh, that that sets up a move inside of the Dow to 30,740 over time. That would be just simply a doubling of a price inside the Dow. So to answer your question, it's probably it's somewhere along one of these trend lines, one of these logarithmic trend lines, and and it's I, I would say it's in the 21,000 to 22,000 ish area, and we'll just have to look at it. Should there be some type of decline, you know, like that? Um, but in the meantime, knowing that those levels haven't been broken, um, you know, I'll just simply revert back to maybe horizontal trading levels. That's 23.6 inside of the Dow. Below that's 22045 as a level. And I'll just be watching for, um, you know, for, for, for some other patterns uh, to form uh, out here. So uh, how about next question? What, what, what question? No, what, no, no. What did that, I not? Uh, that's very thorough. You uh, answered it completely. I appreciate it. And um, we'll, uh, we'll be prepared for some action in 23 minutes' time. Yeah, yeah. Hey, this last chart here, you can take a look at it. Um, since 2009's bottom out here, that high has not always come at the end of January, at the end of uh, December. Sometimes it's in the early January. Sometimes it's in February. Sometimes it's gone to April. So we'll just be watching for that next topping pattern. Price relative strength divergent pattern or seventh wave move. All right, my friend. Thank you, Steve. You bet. Take care. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. Dow's up 90. S&P is up about one and a half. We'll be right back. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. 
The Taz Profile Scanner Plus, developed by John Logan and his team, is a standalone piece of software that can change the way you trade. Let the Taz Profile Scanner work for you by scanning over 5,000 financial instruments such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. Right now, you can get a 30-day free trial to the Taz Profile Scanner Plus right at TFNN.com. And when you sign up, you gain instant access to John Logan's most recent webinar, How Price, Volume, and Time Make Market Profile So Unique. This hour-long webinar with John Logan will walk you through the most powerful features of the scanner and how you can use it to become a more successful and profitable trader. You pay absolutely nothing for 30 days while you try out this software risk-free. For more information on the Taz Profile Scanner and to get your 30-day free trial today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, uh, folks. Let's go answer a couple of questions that have come in. Uh, the first one from uh, Tom. And uh, Tom is looking to go along UGAZ, so <clears throat> he's looking to go along natural gas. And uh, <clears throat> as you know, Tom, and, and everybody else that's out there, uh, with regard to the ETFs, whether it's UNG or, um, or, uh, um, or UGAZ out there, I just like to come back to the active contract inside of natural gas. Inside of those ETFs is probably two contracts um, that make up what it's actually doing out there. But if we take a look at the active traded contract right now, January, what we can see is there's an active uh, A to B equals CD to the downside that is out here. So uh, right now your price is about 271. And the A to B equals CD would get you down to the 255 level. Uh, and with the absence of any kind of bullish reversal candle right now, Tom, I would say keep your hands in your pocket. What we have here is, a, is an A to B equals CD down pattern. May, may turn out to actually be the pattern that prices uh, is actually following. We have the price oscillator below zero. What would change my mind on this, and you certainly wouldn't be buying the bottom, would be for price to get above my red line. That price is 286 on the January contract. Anything that takes place between now and that price point, now that line or that price point will change over you know the coming days, hours, minutes, things of that sort. But that's a good guideline. It's where it's printing at, printing printing out at right now, 2.86.3 2 to be exact. Um, are nothing more than counter trend rallies out here. Need to get this price oscillator turned up and get above zero. By the way, getting above 2.863 will not make that done but at least tell us that okay there is a counter trend rally or a change in trend that is underway otherwise it looks to me like nat gas wants to head lower now let's not just stop here uh, let's go check out the uh, taz market profile see if they can provide us with any other information out here we can see that on a 60 minute basis Price is running a resistance at 275. That happens to be the uh, top of its uh, daily, uh, I'm sorry, its 60 minute box out here. So at this stage, all price has really done for you is run into resistance. The four hour chart, which is the chart to the next panel, uh, the top of the box is at about 2.743. So right around that same level. That's where price is trading at right now. It's found resistance. I see no new box uh, that is going to form here on the uh, daily, at least not as of right now. Um, and so I see 
suggest that you uh, keep your hands in your pockets out here. If at least price was trading above 275, well, then maybe it closed above 275 on a 60-minute time frame. You know, then maybe you've got something. But I don't see anything here that suggests you should go ahead and put your money at risk. Um, but, of course, that depends on the time frame trader, you know, that you are, are, are out here. So, um, but at this stage, I don't see it. So uh, just uh, stay tuned or keep writing in. I'll be happy to look at it for you. And uh, when things change, I'll certainly uh, get on that uh, bandwagon. But right now, the bandwagon is, um, no, keep your powder dry. We have a question here from, let's see, this is from Sylvia. Hi, Steve, you need your expert opinion on NUGT. I'm long at 24.16. I uh, just heard view uh, your intermediate call on gold. Should I exit the position here right now based on the candlestick from July 10th and today's volume? Well, <clears throat> with regard to the NGT, new nugget, um, in my call on gold, it's good to correlate those two because they have such a good correlation. But I don't know what it is that actually took you long into the trade. Uh, but I will give you my evaluation or share with you what needs to take place in order uh, for that trade uh, to suggest to me that being long is the uh, correct trade out here. And I'll start by taking a look at, let us let me do this here. I'll start by taking a look at this daily chart. And uh, what we're looking at here, Sylvia, right now is the uh, Japanese yen. This is the continuous contract. Uh, if I change it to December right now, I can do that. It's not a big deal out here. What we're going to see is that uh, price has bounced in essence, right into Stevie's red line. That's priced at uh, 0.8859. It's almost the high of the uh, trading session today. So just like uh, Tom and I were looking at natural gas, and I said to Tom, hey, if price got above this level, I'd feel more comfortable. Well, because of the correlation between the yen and gold out here, I would feel more comfortable if price got above 0.8859. Right now, it's resistance. We still have a falling price oscillator below zero. That says to me there is a uh, possibility that this is setting up a small A to B equals CD to the downside. Uh, that really takes us back into the uh, trading session. This is in the yen back into November 6. But it's important to start here. I don't know how yen futures are going to respond after the Fed announcement. You're already in the trade. Something got you into the trade. Maybe you make this an end-of-day decision out here because if gold is going to break out or the GDX is going to break out, the yen is going to get above this uh, red line area first. It's just going to happen. So you watch the yen. If you see yen futures uh, trading above 0.8859, you might have something. You might have gotten in on a uh, bottom out there. If we change this chart here to the GDX, we're going to have some different. Now, that's not the nugget, but the GDX is going to be the chart that's going to give us the best information. And what we can see right now that the GDX is doing is it is trading just slightly above my red line. So that's 2180 out here. So unlike what we looked at inside natural gas futures, here you've got GDX attempting to break out. Now, this red line has been a real resistance level. So would I suggest that you get out right now with this trading just slightly above it? No, I wouldn't. Um, there was something that got you into the trade. I don't know what that is. There is an A to B equals CD to the downside inside of the GDX. Let's go draw that in we can see that it's almost hit it right to the T. It didn't exactly. 21.22 is the number. And yesterday it got down to within pennies of that level. And today, what you have, at least right now, as a 148 is a, a bullish engulfing candle. and price is above Stevie's red line. If that's how it closes, then you have enough evidence to support staying inside a long trade on Nugget. And if it closes below Stevie's red line, well, as long as it closes above yesterday's high, you still would have a signal. You would just want a long signal. You would just want to see price follow through tomorrow, and you'd like to see it get above Stevie's red line. So specific with regard to your question out here, and we're trading this chart. We're not trading the uh, gold chart at this stage here. Uh, what we are taking a look at as of 149, this is giving you a, uh, an early buy signal. I just don't know what it's going to be like at 4 o'clock, but you now have my parameters that would assist you with your trade. And if you close above those levels, um, kudos to you for entering into uh, that trade out here. With regard to gold itself, if I put this chart up here on the screen, it's way away from Stevie's red line, 12.59. Now, it's only 10 bucks. Gold can do that in a heartbeat. 
You can see it has not completed the A to B equals CD to the downside. But if you close above 1259.70 inside of gold, that's a real good indication of at least a short-term trade. Maybe it's something more than that, but at least a short-term trade. So, Sylvia, thanks for writing in. Best of luck on that trade. And my answer is no, don't just sell just yet. Uh, keep a stop in place wherever that was in case things go awry after the uh, Fed announcement or after uh, Janet Yellen comes on the uh, boob tube and um, um, gives her farewell goodbyes and um, so on and so forth. So right now, the Dow's up one and on. S&P is up three. We're going to go into this next break here. I don't see any other questions, so if you've got something you want me to look at, write in real quickly. We'll be right back. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank as a member FDIC and equal housing lender. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN has put together the finest programming lineup each trading day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected financial minds in the nation to educate traders and investors. On Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we broadcast eight hours a day, starting at 9 a.m. as Larry Pesavento kicks us off with Trade What You See. Tuesdays and Thursdays, we broadcast 11 hours. Get an early and healthy start to your day as Nico and Paige bring you Living a Primal Lifestyle. Then catch Andy Hecht at 5 p.m. with the Commodities Hour, following the Tom O'Brien Show. Swim Lessons from TD Ameritrade, Think or Swim, is now at 11 a.m., followed by Basil Chapman at 12 noon. See the TFNN program lineup via the link on the front page of TFNN.com to get a complete overview of our TFNN shows and hosts. And keep TFNN's Tiger TV tuned in on your mobile device, PC, or Mac for the latest financial news and information throughout the broadcasting day. TFNN.com, educating investors. This is David White. Stay tuned because coming up next is the Power Trading Hour right here on TFNN. Welcome back, uh, folks. Dow's up 101. S&P is up a couple of points. So, you know, in summary here, um, I take a look. I don't have any other questions that I see. Uh, what we know about the last four rate hikes, here's the last one, June 14, 2017. We know that the S&P uh, traded lower for from 2 p.m. on June 14th when the announcement came out until June 15th, the next morning until about uh, 1020 in the uh, morning out here. We know that gold traded. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry about that. It traded uh, lower right from the uh, get-go. Uh, what we know about March 15th, the 
rate hike prior to that, the S&P 500 immediately started moving higher just by a few points out here, handful of points, uh, when it topped at about 330. Uh, as Janet Yellen was uh, speaking, and the market moved down quite a bit. The S&P 500 gold moved higher, big move, big wide-ranging bar on a 10-minute basis, and just simply continued moving higher. And on December 14th, uh, we saw the S&P create a short-term top out here. Prices moved lower. And we saw uh, the GLD uh, have a, a short-term uh, top as well out there. Uh, in December of 2015, December 17th, we saw the S&P 500 in essence form a, a short-term top, and we saw gold move higher. So with regard to the pattern behavior of gold, it's anybody's question out here. Uh, with regard to the way it's 50-50 out of just four instances. But the S&P has been pretty consistent and that its reaction has been to uh, move lower. No idea whether that will happen. But if it does, you now have some data that supports why that could happen out here. If I were to try to find a pattern or something uh, that's going on even short term inside of the ES Mini, let me see if I can punch up a 30-minute time frame chart out here. Here's our 30-minute chart. Um, yeah, I don't really see any kind of pattern, uh, so to speak, out here. Not just yet. Didn't make a uh, seventh wave move, made a uh, sixth wave out there. That's coming off the low this morning at about, or last night, I should say, at about 11 o'clock. So, um, folks, stay tuned. It should be fun. And the reason it should be fun is because your favorite polar bear in mind, David White, is up next. And Tom O'Brien from 3 to 5. Uh, with any luck, I'll be back with you tomorrow at Thursday. At tomorrow at Thursday, tomorrow Thursday at one o'clock. Take care, folks. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters.